Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Got another video here. We're gonna start uh, going further on Mom's 71 Gremlin X. We're gonna do a couple things and then we're gonna try to get her running. A um, couple things that need to be done beforehand before we can try that. Got to put back on the trans pan gasket and seal that up, put fluid in the trans, and then uh, hook some gas up to it. Oh, and we also gotta get this tightened up. Gotta probably find some bolts or something of the sort to get that tight on there so it isn't flopping around and spinning off and whatever. A couple little things like that, and we can see if this thing's gonna fire. So with that said, we're gonna get right to it. Let's begin. So in the last video, I had mentioned that the car didn't have a trans filter, but clearly I was mistaken. Um, as you can see, you can, something that looks like a filter there, but um, actually, you know, when we opened this up, you know, that was, the, the old filter was in there and um, it was all full of trans fluid and didn't have that nice looking yellow per se. And you know, just kind of looking at it, you know, you don't really see anything that resembles a filter, not like what I'm used to seeing anyway on, on the torque flights. But um, yeah, this whole unit right here, oh, my finger, this right here, this is this is all the filter unit. Kind of has a uh, like an intake from the from the pan here, and then it comes up into here, and that's where it's going in through the pump and that type of stuff. So. Correction to my previous video, it, it does have a filter, and that's it right there on this Borg Warner, late 60s Borg Warner transmission. So anyway, I'm going to clean this gasket off of here, what's left. Got to see, got a little bit more to clean on here. We'll get that all cleaned up, get the bas uh, pan gasket put back on and filled up with transmission fluid, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, now that we got the transmission pan gasket back on, um, while it's, uh, the silicone's drying, I'm just gonna take care of a couple other things that need to be, well, taken care of beforehand, and that is uh, a means of turning the key to start the car. And I say this because the steering column, the, uh, the ignition cylinder has been tampered with, for lack of a better word. As you can see in this picture, that ain't gonna do much good trying to start the car. So, we are gonna basically hot wire the car. I'm gonna put a, a switch from here. It's from the positive of the battery. And we're gonna put a switch for the coil, and then a switch, or not a switch, a push button for the uh, engine starter. And as soon as we get done with that, we'll see uh, if we can put some transmission fluid in there. And then after that, then I believe we need fuel. A couple more things to do. Well, we're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so now that we got that on there, this switch will be for the ignition, um, ignition power for the coil. So by flipping this switch up, um, it will give the coil 12 volts, as long as this is plugged in, whoopsie. There you go. That's the wire that goes, or the, it's part of the, you know, the wiring harness that goes over there. That needs to be plugged in, which it is now. Anyway, so with that turned on, so right now there's power at the coil. It's kind of like you would uh, turn your key to the run position type of thing. So by pressing this little push button I put right here, that is essentially turning the key to the start position. So as far as electrically, we should be ready to start it up. Got to do just a couple more things before we're ready to start. And uh, one of them is this uh, belt uh, pulley kind of thing issue here where I uh, didn't have any bolts in there. So what I'm going to do is one of my older engines I removed from my one of my 78 AMXs, 258 car. Um, I'm going to borrow the, the bolts off the water pump. I borrowed one here already. And I put it on the Gremlin down and in there, if you can see it. And it threads in there. So I'm going to use those um, studs. And that's how I'm going to mount this flat the way it's supposed to be. And um, that should take care of that pulley issue. And also another thing I got to do yet, I got to take off that power steering belt. If you can see that, that power steering belt uh, cannot be on there because I don't want to run that pump dry because this car does not have power steering. So in the future for my mom, it's going to have power steering. But for now, you know, we don't need that at this exact moment because we're just trying to get the engine to run. So yeah, that's the plan for now. You need studs. Studs go there. Studs hold the pulley assembly together. Seems like a good idea to me. One thing I like to do is when I'm putting these uh, threads in for the water pump and the pulley assembly, I like to put a little bit of blue Loctite on the threads that go into uh, the pulley um, assembly. Therefore, when you're tightening the fan or loosening the fan, the nuts that, uh, that hold that on there, they don't spin and come out with it. They stay in there. They have a little more resistance to come out. So, like I said, a little bit of blue thread locker and can, uh, it can really help you in the future. A little, little tip for you. So now also, since I'm in here, this uh, alternator that's in the car is um, not the correct style for the... I mean, an alternator is an alternator. It still needs, you know, it does what it does. But um, with this version of, or this model year of voltage regulator that's on the car the hookups are a little different so what I'm gonna do is this car actually had a lot of its parts from the original engine in the back and the original alternator um, is in the back with it so it look I mean hard to tell if it's any good or not but I mean it, I have it on hand and now I have all this torn apart I just loosened the alternator to loosen the belt so I might as well go the rest of the way and put that other alternator back in for the future even though I'm not going to um, start the car and use the alternator right now, at least it would be on and for the future it would be ready. So since we're in here, we're going to do that too.
Fan is now on. The pulleys are all nice and tight. The uh, power steering uh, belt is off, so you don't have to worry about hurting that pump. Got the original style and hookup alternator that was on the car. Somebody took off. That's now on. Uh, everything as far as that should now be taken care of. Let's uh, let's put some. Transmission fluid in the pan and see what happens after that. See what's left. Hang tight. Here we go. All right, fuel is plumbed up. Uh, got a return style filter in here. I didn't have very much uh, quarter inch hose, so that's the spot for the jerry can for the time being. Um, one thing I want to do before we try to put some gas down the car, I want to make sure that that fuel pump works. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> I'm going to take this off here, this uh, hose, the feeder into the car, <sighs> maybe not, and crank over a little bit and see if we can see some, uh, some fuel coming out of here and then that will tell us if we're picking fuel up or not. Now if the jerry can is higher than, it's higher than the engine, higher than the fuel pump, so it should have enough head pressure. It's just it's got to develop enough vacuum to suck it through there, so it could take a little bit. It could take a little bit. So let's take our negative negative cable here, hook our definitely not right battery up. Nice battery tray, we'll have to fix that. Fix that later. But, um, everything should be hooked up. I'm not going to turn spark on right now, obviously. Just gonna crank her over and then we'll see if we can get some fuel out of here. Just trying to think if there's anything else I needed to check on, but I don't think so. I got a fire extinguisher at my side in case things go wrong. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> As I was getting the battery on there, I happened to look over and notice I was leaking gas. So I think, I think gas is actually starting to make its way up here. So we'll see if it starts squirting it out at all. Yep, there it comes. Holy crap. All right. All right, we'll have to let that dry a little bit before we do try to start it. But we know we're now getting fuel to the car. 
That is step one. That is step one. Fuel to the carb. Fuel pump is good. Um, let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little water bottle, put some gas in it, and I'm going to just put some down the carb. Turn the spark on and see what happens. All right, got some gas in the water bottle. Well, here we go. Here we go. something of that nature. So first off, I'm going to make sure that my makeshift switch is getting power over here. 12.48 volts, so we know the coil has power. Whether or not that is getting to the distributor cap that's actually firing, it could be a bad coil. So what we can do here take out one of the spark plugs and see if we got any uh, spark. Well, there's definitely gas on them. From uh, spraying gas down there, that's quite a bit of gas. I'd say that's not getting any spark. All right, after a decently long battle with this spark issue, I uh, changed the coil, and that didn't seem to do anything, didn't get any spark. So I took off the distributor cap, and under the distributor cap is a little, you know, contact, that's what they call the points. Um, I got up some sandpaper again, and I just went in there and I just sanded, sanded, sanded. Did my best to try to get it all roughed up. You know, maybe do a little better job than I did before. And put it all back together here now. And uh, the spark cable from the coil is now going here and for the time being. Because I want to show you what we have now. <laughs> See that? <laughs> That is spark. We have spark. So if I plug this back in, back into the coil, we should be golden. All right, let's try this again.
my.